Welcome to Evening Prayers for Saturday the 27th of November. Our prayers for yesterday and today are following the telling of the story of the Old Testament through the book of the prophet Nehemiah. In it, as I said yesterday, we'll see the rise and the fall of the nations of the world and also that the fate of the nation of Israel and how that's all tied up together. And in it all, we will see God staying steadfast and loyal to a people who were not always loyal in return. So the purpose of our prayers, both yesterday and today, are to prepare us for entering the period of Advent, which begins tomorrow. And our theme for both days is therefore the story of God and God's people. Let us pray. We all love a good story. We can't wait to hear how it ends. So let us come and pray to the Lord God, author of our stories, each one so different. But if properly rooted in God, they can be amazing. So come and hear God's story for us today and let us make it part of our story. Amen. From Moses to Mark, people have told your story, O Lord. From Psalms to sacred songs, people have sung your praise. From north and east and west and south, you have spelled good news for all nations. Lord God, you maintained your covenant with us forever. May we keep faith with you by living out and telling the full tale of your saving work. Enrich our storytelling that it be attractive and true, striking listeners by its conviction and warmth. People our imagination with characters from the past who have inspired not only their own generation, but continue to speak to countless others. And give us the eyes to recognise the prophets among us today and heed the stories they have to tell. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the first few verses of our reading this evening, they overlap with yesterday's reading because it is a complete continuation of the story. But today we are going to hear the part of the story where the Israelites acknowledge that despite everything that God has done for them in the past, they have turned from God. And they now make a commitment to put things right. So our reading, Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 22 to 38. You gave them kingdoms and nations, allotting to them even the remotest frontiers. They took over the country of Sihon, king of Heshbon, and the country of Og, king of Bashan. You made their sons as numerous as the stars in the sky, and you brought them into the land that you told their fathers to enter and possess. Their sons went in and took possession of the land. You subdued before them the Canaanites, who lived in the land. You handed the Canaanites over to them, along with their kings and the peoples of the land, to deal with them as they pleased. They captured fortified cities and fertile land, they took possession of houses filled with all kinds of good things, wells already dug, vineyards, olive groves, and fruit trees in abundance. They ate to the full and were well nourished. They reveled in your great goodness. But they were disobedient, rebelled against you. They put your law behind their backs. They killed your prophets who had admonished them in order to turn them back to you. They committed awful blasphemies. So you handed them over to their enemies, who oppressed them. But when they were oppressed, they cried out to you. From heaven you heard them. In your great compassion, you gave them deliverers, who rescued them from the hand of their enemies. But as soon as they were at rest, they again did what was evil in your sight. Then you abandoned them to the hand of their enemies, so that they ruled over them. When they cried out to you again, you heard from heaven, in your compassion, you delivered them time after time. 
You warned them to return to your law. They became arrogant and disobeyed your commands. They sinned against your ordinances, by which a man will live if he obeys them. Stubbornly, they turned their backs on you, became stiff-necked, and refused to listen. For many years, you were patient with them. By your spirit, you admonished them through your prophets. Yet they paid no attention, so you handed them over to the neighboring peoples. But in your great mercy, you did not put an end to them or abandon them, for you are a gracious and merciful God. Now therefore, O our God, the great, mighty, and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love, do not let all this hardship seem trifling in your eyes. The hardship that has come upon us, upon our kings and leaders, upon our priests and prophets, upon our fathers and all your people, from the days of the kings of Assyria until today, in all that has happened to us, you have been just. You have acted faithfully while we did wrong. Our kings, our leaders, our priests, and our fathers did not follow your law. They did not pay attention to your commands or the warnings you gave them. Even while they were in their kingdom, enjoying your great goodness to them, the spacious and fertile land you gave them, they did not serve you or turn from their evil ways. But see, we are slaves today slaves in the land you gave our forefathers so they could eat its fruit and the other good things it produces. Because of our sins, its abundant harvest goes to the kings you have placed over us. They rule over our bodies and our cattle as they please. We are in great distress. In view of all this, we are making a binding agreement, putting it in writing, and our leaders our Levites and our priests are affixing their seals to it. Well, the binding agreement the nations make is to live by the laws of God. They put their money where their mouth is and they commit to God. In this reading, we've seen the past, present and future connected. The people looking back through their chequered history, but seeing the constancy and love of God throughout. Recognising the blessings they have received as a nation. And at this point in their present, they stand now together, a people regathered, but in a city in ruins, the wall and the temple in bad repair a people who've lost their sense of connected identity, who need to work out what it is to be community again, a people still under the control of Babylon, still slaves in the world. But their history shows them there is hope, and their hope comes from a life lived with God. And so they make a commitment for the future, committing to live as people of God in the kingdom of God, because from this, their hope comes. And this is what we will be doing for ourselves and our communities through the period of Advent, reflecting on our past and present and committing ourselves to the hope of a future lived with God in God's kingdom. And so with that thought, as we prepare for tomorrow, we pray with the song, In Christ Alone My Hope Is Found, and this version performed by Stamford Methodist Church.
Christ passes the baton on to share the race, to keep his story growing each day alive in us. His endings, beginnings, our beginnings and endings. How do we tell which is which? The eternity of his life wheel keeps turning in us, encounters, departures, sadness of loss, hope for the new. Lord, teach us to live loosely and gently. To hold love not too tightly for ourselves. To see each day as the moment and each moment as the gift. Help us to give blessing to others, to call out the goodness in everything. May the spirit of the Christ who hands over the work to his friends rise in us as we become his hands. And may the encouragement of the Christ two steps back so that we may grow, rise in us as we seek to do his will. Amen. And so we're sending out prayer. Bless to us the past that it may be a source of story to improve us. Bless to us the future that it may be the source of promise to enliven us. Bless to us the present, that it may be the source of joy to encourage us. And bless us to one another for the coming of God's kingdom in peace, love and justice. Bless us to those we encounter in the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.